Hello, my name is Matthew Yakov, and today we're going to talk about Versa SLA monitoring. Our agenda for today, first we're going to see how SLA probes are working between branches, then we're going to see how uh, we measure the SLA toward the controllers and between controllers, then we're going to see what is the adaptive SLA monitoring in Versa, and of course we're going to uh, see what we actually can measure, what are the metrics that we are checking using our SLA probes. So let's begin. First. All the SLA probes between branches are based on the white 1731 protocol encapsulated inside of IP. Second, all the probes are going to be encapsulated and actually encrypted by IPsec. So you won't be able to differentiate probes from the regular uh, data plane traffic or anything, any other traffic, except that by default, all the SLA probes between branches will have the DSCP uh, value of expedited forwarding. Now, um, each probe that we are sending, uh, that the branches will be sending to each other, is approximately 200 bytes in size. And by default, with a default configuration that can be changed later, uh, by default, we are sending probes every two seconds. Uh, let's see how it's going to look like. So imagine that we have two branches, branch one and branch two. And branch one will be sending probes to the branch two every two seconds. And at the same time, this every two seconds, it will receive the reply from the branch two back. Uh, branch 1 will be sending these probes over all available paths to the branch 2. At the same time, branch 2 will have its own probes that it's going to be sending to the branch 1 to measure the connectivity from the branch 2 side. It's worth to mention that each of the tenants will send its own probes to the other side. So, for example, if we will have two tenants on the branch one and two tenants on branch two, and they will need to communicate to each other, uh, the number of probes will double. If we'll have three tenants, there's going to be a three sets of probes, four tenants, four sets of probes, and so on and so forth. Uh, now let's talk about SLA probes to, uh, between branches to the controllers. So Versa by default will measure the connectivity to the controllers to check the availability of the paths. And the probes are going to be the same as between the branches with the only two differences. So first difference, by default, we are sending probes to the controllers every 10 seconds. And second difference is that all the uh, probes will be marked with DSCP value CS6 or the control network control traffic. Uh, let's see how this will look like graphically. So we have branch one, and branch one will send probes to the controller every 10 seconds. At the same time, controller one will send the probes to the branch every 10 seconds as well, just to check the connectivity and through which of the channels it should send the control traffic to the branch. If we'll have multiple controllers, we'll send probes to each of them over all available links, just to check which of the links is gonna be better to use to reach our controllers. And another thing that's worth to mention, that when we configure multiple controllers in your network, controllers will also send the probes between each other to check the connectivity and to be able to choose the best path to reach each other. Now let's see where we can actually configure this all. So here's the Versa Director. We have two branches on controller configured and these branches can communicate with each other. And we're using a single template to configure both of them. So you can configure sleep probes either in the template or in the device mode, but the proper way, of course, is through the template. So if we're gonna go to the template that's used for both branches, in the services menu, there's gonna be the SD-WAN section. And in the SD-WAN section, in the site menu, that's where the SLA probes are configured. So if we'll modify this section, 
we'll see that, for example, interface VNI00.0 has two probes configured. Uh, one of them is going to be to the controllers, and second is going to be uh, between branches. And let's try to modify any of them, or at least see what what is happening inside. So, for example, on the interface VNI00.0, we have two probes. So, first probe, network control, this will send to all the controllers. Every 10 seconds, we will send these probes. And the path will be considered down if the three probes are uh, sent without response. And here's the definition how we will mark this traffic. So it will be marked with CS6, our network control tra type of traffic. Uh, the second probe is in here as the expedited forwarding, uh, mark with expedited forwarding. It's sent every two seconds to all the branches. And this is the configuration that's being created by default. So if you want to change, you can always change the, for example, monitoring interval every four seconds instead of every two seconds or every five seconds and so on and so forth. So it's up to you. You can change any, any kind of probe to any value that you want. In addition to that, we can add additional probes if, for example, you want to measure not only the productivity of your network uh, using the expedited forwarding uh, DSCP values, but also using some of the without marking, like uh, with the best effort traffic or something with Azure forwarding uh, specification, you can always create additional probes and add them to this interface to this type of traffic. Now let's review the adaptive SLA monitoring feature. So as you can see, with the number of sites, the more sites we add, the more probes uh, is going to be generated by the system. And at some point, the number of probes is going to be uh, so big that on some of the sites, uh, we may consume all the bandwidth just by the probes, because each of the probes is going to be 200 bytes in size and each reply will be at 200 bytes in size as well. So you can imagine with the uh, network consisting of like 100, 200, 300 devices, if they will be connected uh, all to each other, the SLA probes quantity is going to be just tremendous. At the same time, it's not necessarily that all of the branches in the full mesh connectivity will send the data plane traffic to each other. In some cases, uh, most probably the traffic is going to be going only between branches to the hubs. And specifically, uh, to address this kind of issue of, uh, of too many uh, SLA probes, we developed the feature that's called adaptive SLA monitoring. How does it work and what does it let us do? Uh, if some of the sites in the full mesh topology are not communicating with each other, so by not communicating I mean we, if, for example, branch 1 and branch 2 do not send any traffic, any data plane traffic to each other, we can start sending SLA probes on the less frequent intervals. At the same time, we will continue normal SLA operations as soon as any kind of data plane traffic will appear between branch 1 and branch 2. Some of the parameters that can be configured in the adaptive SLA monitoring. So first of all is inactivity interval. Inactivity interval means that uh, if, for example, between two of the sites there is no traffic for this period of time, we should start the adaptive SLA monitoring process. Second parameter is the suspend interval. Suspend interval means for how long do we suspending sending probes um, with a default to every two seconds interval. Which means that, for example, if there was no data plane traffic between branches for, let's say, five minutes, uh, we start sending probes not every two seconds, but let's say every 30 seconds or every 60 seconds or however we'll configure these parameters. And of course, the last parameter, retries, is the number of probes uh, with the regular uh, interval that is going to be sent every suspend interval. So now let's combine this together. So we have inactivity interval, 
if there is no communication between branches for the inactivity interval, we start sending probes every suspend interval. And the number of probes that we are sending every suspend interval is equal to the number of the retries count. Now, where do we configure this in the Versa director? In the same place, so where we saw how we configure uh, SLA probes and SLA monitoring. So if we're going to go to the services menu in the SD-WAN side, we can open any of the interfaces and check the probes that are configured there. And for example, uh, in here, we have the default values of inactivity interval 300 seconds, suspend interval 30 seconds, and retries 3. The button Enable enables the adaptive SLA monitoring feature. If there is nothing specified or nothing mentioned in any of these fields, it's going to be the default values, which are equal to 300 seconds in activity interval, send probes every 30 seconds, and number of retries, 3. So with this configuration, if after 5 minutes, there is no traffic between branches. We start sending probes every 30 seconds, and every 30 seconds we're sending four probes in total. So the probe and number of retries. Okay. And the last parameter, what we can actually measure using SLA probes. So first thing that we're measuring for every single SLA probe is the round trip delay. So using this, we can actually check where do we have the least uh, latency in the network and therefore made a proper decision. Second parameter that is measured is the jitter, is the difference in the delays of the response that we uh, received from the other side. For the applications such as voice application, it is very important to have a small jitter which means that the delay between the probes should be um, as constant as possible. And the last thing that we can actually measure using SLA probes is the packet loss. So by default, we're measuring packet loss by the SLA probes. But also, in addition to measuring uh, packet loss uh, with the SLA probes, we can measure packet loss using the actual data plane traffic because it's not always possible to say the actual amount of the traffic, uh, actual packet loss on the link with sending probes every two seconds or every 30 seconds. So for this, we implemented the second method is to actually measure the uh, packet loss based on the actual traffic that is going between the branches or, uh, yeah, between the branches. Uh, and that finalizes our section on the SLA monitoring. I hope this was informative for you, and thank you for watching.